one. Edit it. Good evening and welcome again to the Krypton Factor. Last week, you remember, we had an all-female lineup. Tonight, I'm sure you've noticed it's all-male. All of them dedicated to winning the semi-final place that's at stake tonight, which promises to make it a very competitive half-hour ahead. So let's start straight away with our first round, Mental Agility. Contestants, will you be ready to put on your headphones? In a moment, you will hear through them a series of clock times. What you have to do is to repeat those times to me in reverse order. So, as an example, if you heard the times 3.10, 8.45, 10.30, the correct reply would be 10.30, 8.45, 3.10. Okay, if you got all that, would you like to put your headphones on now, please? Settle as quickly as you can. This is a knockout round. We go on until we've got one outright winner, should that take all night. Are you all settled? Ready for the first series of times? We begin with you, Ken Foster. 8.10, 7.45, 6.30. 6.30, 7.45, 8.10. Correct. We move on to Neville Cohen. 9.15, 4.20, 8.30. 8.30, 9.15, 4.20, 8.30. No, you've got them the wrong way round in the middle. You should have said 8.30, 4.20, 9.15, so you are eliminated, Neville Cohen. On to Roger Blowers. 9.45, 6.15, 7.20. 7.20, Correct. And now Terry Carroll. 3.45, 7.15, 9.10. 9.10, 7 That's correct. So three of you survive and go on now to four clock times. Starting with you again, Ken Foster. 240, 3.25, 9.40, 8.20. 8.20, 9.40, 3.45, 2.10. No, you've got the last two wrong. The first two are right, 8.20, 9.40. It then should have been 3.25, 2.40. You are now eliminated. Roger Blowers. 4.25, 8.10, 3.45, 7.20. 7.20, 7.45, 8.10. 10. I don't know. Pity, because you got the first three right. The last one would have been 4.25. So you two are eliminated. And that leaves us now with Terry Carroll. 11.30, That is correct. And that means that Terry Carroll is the outright winner of the round and he gets the maximum 10 points. Roger Blowers and Ken Foster both went out at the same stage, but Roger Blowers got more of his set right, so he gets six points. Ken Foster gets the four points, and Neville Cohen in fourth place gets two points. So that's the position after just one round. The early leader from Bradford with ten points, Terry Carroll. <laughs> well, let's move very quickly on to the physical ability section. And I should tell you that before the contestants arrive at the assault course, they should have done two months of training, that is, if they followed the Army's training manual, the one they mapped out for them. Once they arrive at the course, Captain Don Glynn instructs them on how best to tackle the various obstacles. They then have a few practices on them. 
and then it's the race itself. Well, let's now go to the start to join Captain Glynn and our four contestants, the preliminaries all behind them. Now it's for real. Competitors, take your marks. Neville Cohen on the left and Roger Blowers away together, followed immediately by squadron leader Ken Foster. He's just two seconds behind them and going very fast indeed at the beginning as Neville Cohen goes into the rope swing with Ken Foster going through ahead of him. And in fact, Neville Cohen goes back into the ditch there and almost gets in the way of Terry Carroll, who started eight seconds behind. That's Terry Carroll, age 29, the only man in his 20s in this race. And on the high balance, it's Roger Blowers. You'll see that he's got gloves and a lot of tape on his hands. Was going down that rope in practice this morning. He went too fast and burnt his hands. But squadron leader Ken Foster in the lead as he goes into the monkey swing. Across he goes and into the crawl. Neville Cohen in fourth place. But Ken Foster over the gate vault and panting hard as he goes over these obstacles. He's in the lead very comfortably, as you can see there, with Terry Carroll in second place going into the gate vault and Roger Blowers third. Ken Foster increasing his lead all the time over the water jump, two obstacles to go, the seesaw, then the last obstacle, and down he goes. It's just a slip, obviously, coming off that seesaw. It doesn't affect him at all as he's got a lot of lead, as you can see. Terry Carroll in second place. Neville Cohen fourth, having trouble in this monkey swing. This is his third crack at it. If he comes down this time, he can go through, but he should aim for that white pole. That's what you've got to get to. And now Terry Carroll doing quite well on this last obstacle on the far side, but not good enough to catch this man, Ken Foster. In fourth place, Neville Cohen going over the gate vault, not making up any ground, but Ken Foster going to drop in first place, used a parachute drop, so he goes down quite nicely. Terry Carroll now just has that drop, has a long hard look, makes it a bit higher for himself, but he lands very safely too. Neville Cohen in fourth place, but in third place, halfway over the last obstacle is Roger Blowers. He was a bit nervous about this last obstacle this morning, but he's coping with it very well. And who wouldn't be nervous about it as you go up to that platform 18 feet high? Will the nerves get the better of him or not as he sits there, has a look? No, he goes down, and that's a good landing too. So, in fourth place, Neville Cohen, the physics lecturer from Birkenhead. You notice a lot of tape on his hands. He burnt his hands also going down that rope on the high balance, going down too fast. And he should know a bit better because he is keen on mountaineering. Climbs in the Lake District in Wales. And he picks his footholds carefully here as he goes across and goes up to 18 feet high. The jump shouldn't cause him any problems. I wouldn't think so anyway as he goes onto the platform. Just the jump left. And there he goes. Falls a bit awkwardly there. And indeed, that awkward fall at the end there resulted in Neville Cohen fracturing a bone in his leg. It wasn't too serious. Uh, he's well on the recovery road now. He had the plaster off just a couple of days ago. But uh, the very clear winner of that round was Ken Foster, so he gets the 10 points. In second place was Terry Carroll, so six points for him. Then came Roger Blowers, four points. And then Neville Cohen with a very hard-earned two points. So the uh, gap has narrowed now at the end of the second round, but the leader still is Terry Carroll with 16 points. Round three next, the intelligence test. Always a difficult one, this, and it isn't any different tonight. So, contestants, would you like to quickly step down behind your benches? And there you've got seven solid shapes. What you have to do is to assemble those pieces so that they form the letters IQ in a solid three-dimensional form. Now, the pieces will fit together in various different positions, but I hardly need to tell you there's only one way they're locked together to form the IQ. So, if you're all ready, the target time is two minutes. Are you ready? Go! Well, it's the smallest of the seven pieces there that may well give the biggest trouble. That's certainly the intention of the expert who designed it. But we won't really know whether the contestants spot the problem until they've almost finished or think they have. 
and I emphasize at this point that they can't hear me speaking, so they can't pick up any clues from what I'm saying. This is Roger Blower's. That circular piece fits inside the larger semicircle, that piece there, which has the tail of the cue on it. Now, Terry Carroll doing very well here. He's just finishing the eye. We're looking at it the wrong way around, of course, but that's the top of the eye he's fitting in. Now, the problem might well emerge here. He's two pieces left, but can he fit them? And that's the piece that's going to give him the real problems. He slots that interlocking piece in. It looks finished, but it's not. There's that one piece left. And that is the problem. This is what it was designed for. Where does it fit? You'll not know by just looking round it, because you can't see it fits inside. He's got to start taking it apart again to find out where it goes. And that's the real problem, how quickly he can do that and spot where it goes. And there's where it goes. Ken Foster slotting it in in the tail piece of the queue. And if he can get that circle in now, he could win this. He's just got to fit that in. Oh, he shouldn't have taken that piece out. If it was slotted in properly, he was right. And in fact, Terry Carroll has found it out and he wins. In fact, he takes the audience a bit by surprise. They weren't quite sure whether that small piece had gone in, but it had. He spots it and he's first. Roger Blowers now looks like he's finished. Has he got the same problem? He has. That piece just left and he's got to find out where it goes. Ken Foster has now discovered where it goes, slots it all in, turns around to show us that it is an IQ and he finishes in second place. He could have won that if he'd just persevered a bit with that circle. Roger Blower's trying to do it upside down now to find out where that piece goes. Neville Cohen has found out where it's gone in the tail of the queue and just has to get that circular piece in, in the part of the queue. He'll not do it while he keeps his hand in there, though. And in fact, Roger Blower's, I think, is going to beat him to it. He's found out where it all goes and he's going to get in in front of Neville Cohen in third place just before the buzzer. So on the buzzer, let's sort out the positions and the points. Terry Carroll, in a very hard test, did very well to finish in the fastest time, so he gets 10 points. Second was Ken Foster, so he gets 6 points. Then finishing just on the buzzer was Roger Blowers, 4 points for him. And not quite finishing Neville Cohen, he gets 2 points. So we feed those scores into our master scoreboard with the halfway stage just gone. And now leading, extending his lead to 26 points is Terry Carroll. Well, the points are even harder to get in the next round observation. Indeed, we're still waiting for the first contestant in the Krypton Factor to pick up all ten points here. Hasn't been done yet. Perhaps tonight is the night. Contestants, would you now quickly turn round and face your screen? Coming up, the clip of film. Afterwards, three questions each. Here it comes. Charlie Victor 3, move in to take position, blocking North and High Street. Victor 5 to control, pursuing Grey Air Force truck and turning into the crossroads. Victor 5, come in, Victor 5. Report your position. Over. Victor 5 to control. We're off the road in Pepperton Street. We came under machine gun fire. We're OK, but the cars are right off. Control to all units in vicinity of Pemberton Street. Converge on truck. Approach with caution. Repeat, approach with caution. Victor 9, we're off the road to machine gun. Control to all units. Armed police units are being moved in. Meanwhile, close all exits. Keep them boxed in. It's war. Victor, drive it's bloody you. war. <laughs> Pass 
over the area in approximately 30 seconds. Visibility deteriorating. Descending to lower level now. Over. I've got him control. Directly to the nurse. Heading 090. I'm going in for a closer look. Over. Dive straight into the ground. Roger, Red Leader. Report position and return to base. Out. No. They were long gone. They jumped. Shoot it out. That's why they chose today. Cloud cover. They're down somewhere. Anywhere in this stretch. A clip from the professionals. You've got three questions each, all of similar form. Starting with you, Ken Foster. First, an either-or question. What was the call sign of the plane? Was it G-B-E-M-X or G-M-E-B-X? B-E-M-X. Correct. Two points. A question on the visual content. How many jet planes did we see actually take off? Two. That's correct. Another two points. Now on the dialogue, what was the call sign of the police car that went off the road in Pemberton Street? Alpha 2-0. No, it was Charlie Victor 5. Oh, so you remain on four points. We move on to Neville Cohen. Which police car reported the takeoff? Victor 2 or Victor 3? Victor 2. No, it was Victor 3. No points there. How many villains did we see firing machine guns outside the plane? Two. Correct. Two points. When was Red Leader going to make his first pass over the area? 0900. No, he was going to do it in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So you remain on two points there. Roger Blowers, did we see the landing wheels of the light plane retract? Yes or no? No. No is correct. You get two points. How many jet planes did we see in flight formation? Four. Correct. Another two points. What heading was the light plane spotted on? 090. Correct. Another two points. You get a maximum six there. Now, Terry Carroll. Did we see the pilot of the light plane parachute down? Yes or no? No. We did, in fact, so you don't get any points. How many parachutists did we see land? Two. No, we saw three. Still no points. Which was the last police car to go off the road? Charlie Victor 9. That's correct. You get two points there. And so much then for the questions. Now it's on to the identity parade. Now you may remember in the film the villains made their getaway in a light plane. Just one of the villains in that plane had a patch over his left eye. That's the man our contestants must spot because we've got a line-up here of nine villains. All of them have patches over their left eyes, but just one of them was in that film. Which one? Look long and hard at them. We've got a few minutes here before we have to make up our minds. It is a very tough one with them wearing eye patches and balaclavas, but in fact we did see him for several seconds on the screen. Did I go further? We saw him twice, because at the very end of the film, when the parachute has dropped to the ground, he was the last one we saw. He was taking off his harness. But in the plane, he was the only one with the eye patch. Which one was he? So as they line up for the last time, the contestants have indicator panels in the armrests of their chairs. In a moment, I shall ask them to select which one was the villain in that film. So if you've made your selections, I'm now going to ask you to press the button. Will you press? Now! Right, you have all made your selections. Ken Foster has chosen number five. Would he step forward, please? Neville Cohen has also gone for number five. Roger Blowers has, would you believe, also chosen number five. And just to complete it all, Terry Carroll has chosen number five. Now, this happened once before, a few weeks ago in a Krypton Factor. They all chose one, but they were all wrong. Let's find out if they're all wrong or all right this time, as I ask the villain in that film to identify himself to us now. Yes, they were all right. It is number five, actor Christopher Reich.
Well, that really was an outstanding performance by all our contestants because I thought it was a very hard one with an eye patch and balaclava as well. And in fact, I think we've got two records now on the Krypton Factor. Not only have we never had a situation where all our contestants have picked the right man, but as I was saying earlier, never before has any one contestant picked up all ten points uh, in this particular round. But Roger Blowers has done that tonight. He's got the maximum in this round of ten points. In second place at the end of that round is Ken Foster, who's got eight points. And then Neville Cohen in third place has six points and sharing third place with him is Terry Carroll, also six points. So with just one round to go, we put those scores into our master scoreboard now and find that the gap has narrowed slightly. Ken Foster is catching up with 28 points, but the leader from Bradford is Terry Carroll with 32 points. Well, very close indeed going into the last round. It's still very open because there are so many points available in this general knowledge round. Would our contestants be ready on the buzzers, please? Rapid fire questioning with three and a half minutes to go to the finish, beginning now. Zealand is a province of which? Interrupted there by Neville Cohen. The Netherlands. Right, Holland, two points. New Amsterdam was a Dutch settlement. Interrupted by Ken Foster. New York. New York City, two points. What is the emblem of the House of York? <coughs> Terry Carroll. White rose. Correct two points. What are you suffering from with rosola or rubella? Ken Foster. Chicken pox. No German measles. Oh, yes. You lose two points. What was the abbreviated code name of the German missiles, the doodlebugs? <coughs> Neville Cohen. V1. V1 is correct two points. How is V, once used as a wartime victory sit interrupted, you've got to be right with this, Roger Blowers. Da, dit, dit, dit. No, that's wrong. It should be dot, 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 dash, which is, of course, the famous start of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Where in the average home would you see a Q dot? The answer, believe it or not, is on a television screen. Oh. Uh, what competitive sport was originated at Telemark in Norway? Roger Blowers? Long distance skiing. Correct two points. What is a skeen do? <coughs> Roger Blowers. A, a dagger in the... Um... Right, that will do a dagger. Two points. And just two minutes to go. Which Shakespearean character asked, is this a dagger which I see... Interrupted by Neville Cohen. Macbeth. Correct, two points. Mac the knife appears in which... Ken Foster. The Threatening Opera. That's correct, two points. How many old pence were there in half a crown? Terry Carroll. Twelve and a half. Sorry, thirty. All right, you corrected in time. We give you two points. How many months of the year have exactly thirty days? Roger Blowers. Three. No, four. You lose two points. Who wrote the, no the novel The Four Just Men? <coughs> Neville Cohen. Edgar Wallace. Yes. Edgar Wallace, two points. Which American organisation was headed by J. Edgar Hoover? Neville Cohen. The FBI. Correct, two points. Who is the Director General of the CBI? <coughs> Neville Cohen. Methven. Right, I'll take that. Sir John Methven, two points. Which Sir John was the principal conductor of the Halle Orchestra? Neville Cohen. Oh. Barbara Olley. Correct, two points. Less than a minute to go. Who played the title role in the film Barbarella? <coughs> Jane Roger Fonda. Blowers, sorry. Oh, Jane Fonda. Correct, two points. Whom did Jane Eyre finally marry? <coughs> Neville Cohen. Mr Rochester. Correct, two points. Rochester the butler was the straight man to which... Interrupted by Terry Carroll. Jack Benny. Correct, two points. Benny Goodman is a jazz virtuoso. Interrupted by Clarinet. Roger Blowers. Clarinet. Is correct, two points. Clarendon, Caslon and Compacta are styles of what? Roger Blowers. Print. Print face. Right, we'll take that typeface, two points. With what artistic activity do you associate daguerreotype? <coughs> Neville Cohen. Uh, daguerreotype is photogra photography. Correct. Two points. Seven seconds to go. Which photographer became the Earl of Snowden? <coughs> Ken Foster. Tony Armstrong Jones. Correct. Two points. <coughs> and that's the buzzer for the end of the round and the contest, which means that our winner tonight is our management accountant from Bradford with a Krypton factor of 38, Terry Carroll.
Well, our warmest congratulations to Terry Carroll, but what a tremendous contest tonight, particularly the last two rounds. And in the general knowledge there, look at Neville Cohen, went into the last round with 12 points, finished up with 30, picked up 18 points there. Roger Blowers had a good last round too, to share 30 points. Ken Foster in second place, 32. But it's our congratulations to Terry Carroll, who goes on now to the semi-final. We shall be back with another Krypton Factor next Friday at the usual time, 7 o'clock. Join us then. Good night.